Well, hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of our Agents of Change series presented by State Farm and SAD. As we celebrate National Distracted Driving Prevention Month, these segments are created to help parents coach their young drivers on their journey to safe driving. Distractions continue to be a leading cause of teen crashes, so we must all do our part to keep teens safe. We're thrilled to have an all-star panel with us today. Please join me in welcoming our panelists. Isaiah Ruiz, State Farm Agent from California. From Michigan, we have State Farm Agent Emily Pierce. Coming live from New York, welcome State Farm Agent Jolene Kaler. Sarah Whiting, State Farm Agent from Texas. And lastly, we have Hike, a State Farm Agent from Washington. Welcome everyone, and thanks for joining us today. As agents, agents of change, if you will, I'm sure you have a unique perspective of what you think when you hear the word distracted driving. Isaiah, you wanna start us off? Yeah, first thing I think about is that cell phone, right? Everybody has one, everybody gets text messages and calls, and that, that's probably the number one distraction when we're on the road is, you know, even something as quick as just ch checking a text message. So uh, it's important that we, we do what we can to make sure we avoid that. Similar to Isaiah, I definitely think of your phone as the number one distractor, um, but I also just had a baby. So, um, you know, things like reaching to, to grab a toy that was dropped or, um, you know, trying to calm her from crying or um, even just conversing with other people in the car, they could all be huge distractions while you're driving. Well, I can second Emily's um, children in the car as a distraction, but also other kids, you know, you're driving with other teen friends, you're a new driver, um, all of those people talking, picking different radio stations, arguing over things, total distractions in the vehicle. I completely agree. I think that, um, you know, as a kid, um, our biggest distraction was whether or not to change the radio dial, right? Um, and obviously that dates me a bit. Um, but nonetheless, I, the cell phone, the alerts that continue to, to drop um, and, and grab our attention, right, um, are just so common. Uh, I think that um, I'm not a mom. I have nieces and nephews, but I have pets. And so my two cocker spaniels are probably as needy as, as, a, as a two year old in the car. And so um, it doesn't matter whether it's people or, or it's my cell phone going off. It's definitely, uh, definitely something that'll grab your attention quickly. Distracted driving is a big thing and I'm, you know, in a car insurance business and we think the accidents and dangers on the road have to be with, you know, other people or stoplights or something bad that's happening on the road usually comes from distracted driving. I do have two boys. I have a four and a six year old and it's very distracting to be in a car. So it almost takes this sense of discipline to be able to just normally drive and look ahead of you and count a couple of seconds ahead. So whenever I think about distracted driving, I think of danger. I think of uh, accidents. I, I think of, you know, injuries. I think of damage. So to me, uh, I think it's a very important part to every driver to uh, decide that today I'm gonna get in front of the steering wheel and I'm gonna do my best not to be distracted because that is probably the best thing you can do um, as far as safety on the road, to just be in the moment, be focused and, and not, not try to let the phone or the kids or the screaming or the conversation distract you away from the road because driving is the most important and one of the most dangerous things we do, we should be very focused. Absolutely, 100% agree. And those are all excellent thoughts. And this is also an excellent place for us to talk about what we can do as agents of change to really change that culture around distractions. Agents, what advice would you have for our SAD students out there working to end this epidemic of distractions? Uh, I think uh, one of the things we can do is engage the whole community. Um, State Farm really enjoys, uh, you know, having a very strong and rich partnership with SAD. And I know you probably have local agents in your community uh, who would be glad to partner uh, with you. And, you know, we all want to keep teens safe on the road and everyone really, not, not just teens, but um, there's plenty of local agents that would be glad to partner with you and educating. It's also so important to have parents be part of the conversation as well. Um, State Farm has these short articles called Simple Insights, and they have a lot of um, great talkings to um, help aid in that conversation. Open communication is key, I think, because 
you know, there's there's so many, driving is so different as Sarah um, mentioned earlier, it's so different today, um, even than it was 10, 15 years ago. Um, so it's important to have those, those open conversations and to make sure that parents are exposing kids to these, the dangers of um, distracted driving. I agree with all of that too. And I think another thing we have to be very aware of when we're a passenger in a car is if we see somebody else that's distracted, don't be afraid to speak up. You know, don't say, hey, you know, I'll finish that text message for you. Or do you want me to change the radio station? You know, we remain silent. We're kind of, we're allowing that type of behavior to continue. And that could put everyone in the vehicle at risk. And SAD has some great documents out there that help kind of coach you and how you can speak about that stuff to both your peers in your school while you're in the car with somebody else. So take advantage of those resources for sure. And the truth of the matter is we're distractions are just a way of life. We're all distracted, right? Adults and teens. So it doesn't, it doesn't really um, change as you get older. As a matter of fact, I, I'm challenged to think that maybe it's even greater as you get older. Um, and one of my very good friends tells his kids all the time, and I'm going to use it, um, two of the most dangerous things that we can give young drivers and, and truthfully all drivers um, is a cell phone and keys to a car. Um, cell phone can change your life, right? In many, many ways, um, not even just in the car, but nonetheless, the keys can change not only your life, but someone else's. And yet when we combine the two in one vehicle, um, in, in one interaction, the truth of the matter is it's a very dangerous deal by letting it become that distraction. Um, so it, we need to take a focus and, and change our thought process and the culture of what we do when we're behind the wheel and just let it be that element of focus um, that we really have a job to do, right? And that's to keep ourselves safe and, and keep others around us safe. I agree with that. Um, and you know, I think it's a common sense to realize that most of us know that driving distracted is wrong, right? It's a, com it's a common sense item for most of us, right? It's like, uh, I know not drinking enough water is, is bad, but we continuously sometimes skip, but um, we, we continue to do it. I mean, that's just a matter of fact of what human nature is like, right? There's a fact of science that we ha have to overcome. Uh, you know, we have to make uh, this uh, urgent plea to stop putting yourself, you know, ourselves into this risk. And uh, we think that this is a, a critical message we have to deliver out there to teens and not just teens, to most other drivers out there as well. You know, driving distracted uh, is selfish behavior and that puts everyone at risk. And it's something that we have to continuously remind ourselves to improve and work on, just like we have to remind ourselves often to drink more water, eat healthy, exercise and all the other good things. Right. We know that Distracted Driving Prevention Month is coming to a close. We're at the end of April. How can State Farm and SAD keep this conversation going all year long? Well, uh, Bailey, first, we have to model the behavior each time we get inside the car. You know, it's, this is the month that we bring the awareness, but uh, especially us as agents of change, we have to set the example. We can't, you know, send a quick text when we're at a red light or change the playlist, you know, when we're, we're not happy with the song and we're driving, we got to wait to make sure we, we are not distracted while we drive. So um, it's something that that's, we have to keep it top of mind. Um, you know, like Hike said, sometimes we, we forget or, or we just get distracted, right? So we just have to make sure that we minimize all distractions and remember that when we, we're behind the wheel, um, you know, like, uh, like Sarah said, it can, it can be very dangerous. So we got to make sure that uh, we do our part and make sure that we, we model um, that behavior each time that we get in the car. Of course, it's also important to realize that in many states, uh, there's a cell phone ban. So driving um, while using your cell phone is against the law. Um, not only are you putting other people that, at risk, you're also you know, breaking the law um, that way. So it means that an officer could pull you over and ticket you for the use of um, a cell phone or any other distractive devices. Um, regardless of the law elements though, teens and parents must know that there's no safe way to, to break the law. And as we've stated before, you know, if you're getting behind the wheel, you're, regardless of whether you're distracted or not, you're putting yourself at risk, you're putting your passengers at risk, and you're putting other drivers at risk as well. So it's just important to make sure that um, we're not taking that lightly. And it's a huge responsibility um, to get behind the wheel. Yeah, and I think the idea that we need to be the ones that speak up, we both parents, but also teens in the car, new drivers, old drivers, you know, if we were seeing somebody that was potentially going to drink and drive, we wouldn't hesitate to speak up. 
and distracted driving carries the same consequences. And we need to be the agents of change in this. And the individual, the passenger in the car, the friend, whatever it may be, has to be willing to say, hey, you know, just put it down, put your phone down, or I'll finish that. Like I've said before, offer to help. Um, but we need to be willing to speak up and, and stop these things from happening. Jolene, I completely agree. I think um, holding one another accountable is huge. I mean, we're we're pretty good at that on, on social media, right? Um, a lot in news news as well. Um, that we love to hold each other accountable and, and point out faults. But yet, when we get in the car, we will ride along with someone that um, that will still handle their phone, that will still look around, that will still change that playlist, whatever that looks like. Check GPS for that matter. Um, and yet, we don't say anything. Um, so holding each other accountable, I think, is is a way. To, to change this and and from a parent um, perspective on that it's okay to ride with your teens um, it's okay to to say hey you drive to the store today or you take us to dinner um, they that is the only way to really get a pulse on on what goes on in the car um, and it gives you time to have that bonding conversation and that visit time as well so um, I, I just think overall to break the cycle and to really really draw awareness to to what how big of an issue this is and how, how much impact we can really have. We have to hold each other accountable through that. I love it, Sarah. Accountability, right? And I think a, a big piece to accountability is not necessarily keeping others accountable, but keeping yourself accountable. There's a really good saying I remind this to myself is be the change that you want to see, right? So often it doesn't really begin with others. It begins with yourself. You know, because everybody makes a difference. You make a difference, right? And, and State Farm is here to help. You know, our, you know, we have resources, we have agents, you know, we have simple insights, you know, in school communities. We try to help raise awareness and do excellent work within within the change. So my, my recommendation isn't just about, you know, working on others, but often the change needs to begin with, with what you see in the mirror. So keeping yourself accountable will eventually lead to others seeing the way you keep yourself accountable. And it does make a difference in the world because you do make a difference and it does begin with that one person got that right hike as always panelists you've given us a lot to think about today as we wrap up i'd be curious what's one piece of advice that you would give to teen drivers as they fight to stay distraction free uh, i think the one piece of advice i would give is you know the the text the call the the social media it, it can wait right um you know there, it, the, the most important thing is getting to your destination safely and not injuring anybody else. So whatever it is, put your cell phone away and, you know, focus on what you're doing at, at, on the task at hand. And uh, once you get to your destination, feel free to, you know, text and, and do what you got to do on the phone. I agree. I also think um, that a huge piece of advice that I was offered um, when I first got my license was how big of a responsibility driving is and to treat it that way. I think, um, you know, there's so much freedom that comes with being able to drive. Um, and, but I think that we also sometimes forget how much of a responsibility it is to keep ourselves safe, to keep others safe um, and your passengers as well. No one ever wants to hear this piece of advice and we're meeting with customers and clients and, and going over new drivers in the household and everything. My number one piece of advice is don't drive with other people. Um, you know, it puts additional people at risk, young drivers, new drivers, they just haven't figured all of the little details of driving out yet. And having another person in the car is a distraction. And so my piece of advice is always just wait to have the other people in the car. Your driving is getting to and from point A, B, whatever it may be. Um, and it doesn't have to be a community event. It can be just you in the car. I think um, I was a prior educator um, and taught at the high school level and uh, realizing your own worth um, is huge. And we choose um, to have you here every day. If it's totally up to us, whether uh, we have a personal relationship, a business relationship, any element of a relationship uh, with you, we, we choose to have you here. Um, and I think realizing your worth is huge. Um, we want you to survive. We want you to not be injured. We want your life to look as optimal as possible. And if you forget that, realize the other people's worth um, in those cars and in that in that oncoming traffic or at that red light that um, with the little one that may not be fastened in that seatbelt um, appropriately to live with that um, is, is something that you don't deserve. So um, keep focus on the worth of yourself and of others. That's a great message, Sarah. Thank you. I'm going to I'm going to take that and share it with some people that are close to me as well. Um, 
I, unless you work for 911, I don't think we ever get those emergency phone calls on our, on our cell phones, right? We often treat the text message that needs to be responded as soon as possible. We treat that phone call that needs to be picked up, but we don't realize um, at what cost, right? So as soon as we start thinking about, you know, nothing is really an emergency. Emergency goes to 911 first, right? So, um, and then it took me a while to realize that lesson to myself as well, because I used to be, you know, when I was younger, a lot more, I got to respond to people on the spot. I have to be available. It is really not about that. Nothing is that important. Nothing's more important than your safety and your life. So as soon as you realize how dangerous that distracting uh, distraction could be, uh, you can be just slightly more safer on the road. And every person that's slightly more safer on the road can really make our roads into a safer place and into a safer world. So it all begins with yourself. My best recommendation is just know and understand that cell phone is not an emergency. It's just a cell phone. Definitely. Agents, these are great tips all around. I again want to thank our esteemed panel from State Farm, our true agents of change. And I also want to thank you, Sad Nation, our followers, for helping us share the rules of the road as we celebrate National Distracted Driving Prevention Month. That's all the time we have for now. Be safe every trip, every time.